I'm Sarah, reporting from a large corn processing plant near Janesville, Minnesota. This facility is owned by a company called Guardian Energy. Energy is in their name because that's what they do here. Guardian is one of several plants in Minnesota that produces liquid energy, more commonly known as ethanol. Okay, so what's ethanol? Ethanol is a clear liquid that looks just like water. It's blended with gasoline to produce clean energy fuel for our cars. And the amazing thing is, it's made from corn, golden kernels like these. So how is ethanol made? Well, I sure don't know. Let's go find out. Hi, I'm Sarah. Hi Sarah, I'm Tom. So what is your job here? I'm the plant manager here. So you can show me how ethanol is made? Yes, I can. Let's go see. Here we are in the lab. You have to wear your safety glasses. I'm going to introduce you to Lauren. Sarah, this is Lauren. She is our quality control manager. She'll show you some more about the process. We start off with corn, and there's a lot of dry storage energy in here in the form of starch. We're going to convert this dry energy into a form of liquid energy called fuel ethanol. How do we do that? I'll walk you through the process. We start by taking the corn, we mill it into a flour, which taps into that energy of the starch. We mix that flour with some recycled water streams, and we cook it into a mash. We also have to add some alpha amylase, which is an enzyme which breaks down starch into complex sugars. What do you do with the mash? We take that mash, and it's a hot mash, which contains a lot of complex sugars right now. We have to cool that off so it can go into fermentation. For fermentation, we add some yeast, which are going to naturally ferment that sugar into ethanol. And to accelerate that process, we add some other enzymes called glucoamylase, which make this happen for us naturally in about 48 to 60 hours. From there, we take that fermented mash and we get it ready for distillation. We want to remove that alcohol. We're going to apply heat to evaporate out the alcohol and make a mixture that is 190 proof of alcohol. It's 95% alcohol and 5% water. Uh, in order to further dehydrate that water, we have to run the alcohol through some sieve beads, which is going to wick out that last 4 to 5% of water. So now we have our fuel grade ethanol, which is ready to be sold. And then we still have some mash that's left over. There's still some corn solids in there and some water that we want to recycle for later in the fermentation process. We take the solids out of the water by putting it through a centrifuge that removes the solids and some of the liquids. We condense those liquids down into a syrup, which can then be applied back into our distiller's grains. But before we do that, we separate out some of the corn oils, which naturally separate out because corn oil is lighter than the water. The remainder of the syrup that's been deoiled then, we're going to dry this down with the other cake or wet cake solids that we had and make a dried distiller's grain product. This is about one third of every bushel of corn goes back into the market for cattle, swine, poultry, and aquaculture. Wow, that's a lot of science. What kind of education do you have to have in order to be head of this lab? My background is in biotechnology and chemistry, but really this whole plant is about STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. What kind of instruments and equipment do you use in the lab? Well, we have some very high-end pieces of equipment for liquid, gas, and ion chromatography, but we also have a lot of practical pieces of equipment that the operators use for day-to-day -day testing. Things that you might see in a high school lab are for titrations, pH monitoring. We monitor our yeast with our microscope. If you look around, you might see a lot of things that are familiar to you in your own lab in your high school. Thanks, Lauren. That was a lot of great information. What's next, Tom? Well, let's go into the control room. Here in the control room, the operator can control the entire plant from the computer. The operator can start up 
different processes, the slurry process, fermentation process, distillation process. He can also control what temperature he needs to run at, how many gallons a minute he needs to run at, or change his uh, flow rates, pH rates, anything that he needs, he can change from right here on the computer. Does that mean that someone has to be here 24 hours a day? Yes. Uh, operator has to be here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Can we go see more? You bet. The operator is getting a sample of the slurry. He'll be taking that into the lab and he'll be running some tests on it. Sarah, these are fermentation tanks. Inside these tanks, the flour that's slurried up has enzyme yeast added to it. 48 to 60 hours it'll sit in these tanks and it'll ferment. It'll be about 12 to 14 percent alcohol after the fermentation process. From here, it'll go to the distillation. Guardian Energy has implemented some new technologies that has allowed it to be 25% more efficient. We use 25% less natural gas, 25% less electricity, and we've also implemented new technologies that make Guardian Energy zero liquid discharge. By zero liquid discharge, I mean we don't release any water to the environment. Guardian Energy uses less than two gallons of water for every gallon of ethanol produced. The only water that we lose here from Guardian Energy is due to evaporation from our cooling tower. This is a cooling tower that we use to cool all our fermenters and then we also use to cool our ethanol once we've evaporated it. This looks like a big pile of cornmeal. What is it? Actually, Sarah, this is a pile of dry distiller grains. After we've evaporated the alcohol out of the corn mash, we've dried the corn mash, this is the product that's left. This will be fed to cattle, beef cattle, dairy cattle, swine, and also poultry. How much of this do you produce a year? We produce over 300,000 tons of distiller grains every year. Out of every bushel of corn, about 35% is turned into distiller grains, 35% is turned into ethanol, the remaining is CO2 and corn oil. That's it for the tour. Do you have any other questions? Yeah, how many trucks come in here in a day? Oh, we bring in probably 200, 250 trucks per day of corn. And then how much ethanol is produced in a year? In a year's time, we'll produce about 120 million gallons of ethanol. That equates to about 40 million bushels of corn used in a year's time as well. Where does the ethanol go when it's shipped out of here? Well, we ship all our ethanol by unit trains and by truck. Every week, we'll ship an 80-car unit train to the East Coast. Once it gets to the East Coast, it'll arrive at a blending facility and a blender will mix 10% ethanol to 90% gasoline and that's the most common gasoline that everyone purchases. You do also have the ability to purchase E85, which is 85% ethanol and 15% petrol gasoline. Ethanol has a bright future. Ethanol production continues to improve in efficiency and lower energy use to produce ethanol. Ethanol is a renewable fuel. Ethanol uses agricultural products. Guardian Energy employs 47 full-time employees. The different types of jobs that Guardian Energy offers are anything from accounting to biology to process engineering, chemical engineering, and shipping, receiving. If you want a job in the renewable fuels industry, chemistry, mathematics, applied sciences, biology, those are all good fields to study. Thanks for the tour, Tom. It was great. I learned a lot. Well, thank you for coming. I was glad to have you. That's the report from Janesville, where Minnesota-grown corn is made into food, feed, and fuel, important products we use every day.